Welcome to the Barrel Chat Podcast, where we provide an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palates of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncie, and as always, I am joined by Dustin Wood. How are you doing, Dustin? Good. Work's over. Uh, we're going to play for the day, uh, drink some beers, talk beer, although I talk beer all day long, so it doesn't really make much of a difference, but so far, so good. That's right. We got a, we got a good beer on tap today. Um, so I'm excited to get into into this one. But before we do that, we want to let you know that you can follow us on Instagram. We are at Barrel Chat, and that way uh, you can stay in the loop. What is that loop? We have no idea. We go out, we share some stuff, we drink beer from now, uh, time and time again, and uh, share it on stories, stuff like that. So uh, it's the only social media account that we currently have. So go ahead and give us a follow there. If you love our podcast, please take a moment to leave a five star rating on your favorite podcast app. So whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, any of the other like third-party ones out there, Google Podcasts, stuff like that, uh, just leave us a five-star rating uh, if you like us. That feedback does help us improve, and uh, it will help us reach more listeners. So if we do get feedback, you could shoot us an email or a DM and give us some, some like critical feedback if you want. Perfectly fine, too. Uh, we'd also love to hear from you if there's a particular beer that you'd like for us to review. Shoot us a DM on Instagram or email us at barrelchatpodcast at gmail.com. Let's jump into this beer now. Now that, now that we got all the juicy stuff out of the way, let's get into the real juice of the show. And this isn't even a juicy beer. I should have saved that. Should have saved that. Killed it. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, today, we are talking about... Would you say it's a legendary beer in the craft beer world? It's definitely a sought after beer because you can't get it anywhere else. It's the zombie dust of Wisconsin. Yeah, but Z- it's even dust more pre, so now because they don't though. because they don't distro it. So it's it's like Sun King before Sun King got distro in other places. But was, was Sun King that sought after? I mean, you know, people that were outside of the state, I think, really wanted to try some of Sun King's things. When Cremeo won a gold medal, uh, people probably wanted to try it, and they couldn't get it anywhere because it wasn't distributed outside of Indiana. But I would say it's a giant in the beer industry because it's something different, and almost everybody knows what it is. That is true. So today we are talking about New Glarus Brewing Company's Spotted Cow. New Glarus is out of New Glarus, Wisconsin. Uh, they only distro within Wisconsin. Apparently, they, they originally... The brewery distroed into several uh, states around them in the early 2000s when they started. They brought that all back in and uh, kind of created this somewhat of a phenomenon of you can only get this here. And that still continues to this day. You can only get it in Wisconsin. So I know whenever I'm up there for work or something, I always make sure to bring some back. It is, funny enough, one of my wife's favorite beers, despite the fact that she's not really into uh, this kind of style, mm. which can also be debated as well, because uh, they claim that this beer style is a farmhouse ale, which is typically like a saison. A lot of people think it's a cream ale, so it, it kind of jumps back and forth. I feel like at one point it was called a cream ale, or maybe, maybe it was just we saw other people calling it a cream ale. Yeah, it almost feels like at one point I remember it being referenced as a cream ale or like a funky cream ale or like a sour cream ale um i don't even know how to start with the differences here because it does taste like a cream ale to me with a little bit of extra twang yeah i I mean maybe that's kind of what it is so uh some a few beer notes here uh 4.8 abv 18 ibu spotted cow is cast conditioned and unfiltered it is a blend of Pilsner malt, white wheat, and caramel malt. New Glarus also uses the water that comes from its own well. Hmm. Not to mention that the Noble Says hops are used and fermented with German ale yeast. We like Spotted Cow because it won't overwhelm you, unlike how an IPA would. When it comes to taste, the Spotted Cow will remind you of a blend of honey, orange peel, or citrus, and a great balance of malt and hops. It leaves a bready aftertaste. It has the typical fruity and earthy flavors of farmhouse ale. So that's what I pulled from their untapped. Which I believe is also 
Maybe. Nope. It's not on the bottle. They have a fucking really long description on the bottle, though. Are you sure it's not? Because that is the one that is also from their website. So, like, I I double-checked everywhere to see I don't know. This says every though. drop of Wisconsin's original farmhouse. Oh. Yeah. Um, but um, it's also, I believe it's a Saws hops. Like Saws, not Saws. I could be wrong, but I think it's Saws. Uh, it's right. Australian, I believe. Um, or New Zealand. Probably New Zealand. So it's also trying to kill us somehow as well. Yeah, probably. Makes sense. I don't know. But like I said, here, we'll jump into the can design, well, sort of. I, I did want to throw out one other thing. Um, so I looked up what cast conditioning was, just because I can never remember what it is. And if there's anyone new listening and they don't know, like I didn't, I might as well put this out there. So cast conditioning is the process in which a draft beer retains yeast to enable a secondary fermentation. And that takes place in a cask. You'll hear them referred to as like a firkin, um, especially around here. The net result is a beer that has a much gentler level of carbonation, a rounder mouthfeel, and since it is unfiltered, usually shows a slightly more complex flavor and an aromatic profile. It is often slightly cloudy and is best served at cellar temperature, which is around 55 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just, a little war- we're a little colder than fifty five right now, as far as the bu- the pour was concerned. But here on the label itself, it talks about casking as well. But <clears throat> you've got every drop of Wisconsin's original farmhouse ale is an artisan brewed and bottled by the hardworking employee owners of the New Glarus Brewing Company, which is really cool. It's a unique feature that New Glarus does; they're employee owned, which is cool. Same as uh, Fountain Square Brewing now. Yep. Uh, so then it's uh, Spotted Cow adheres to the Rheinheistengebot. Rheinheistengebot? Rheinheistengebot? That's the purity law. The German one that I couldn't remember in one of the earlier episodes. Oh, yeah. The pure, okay. The purity yes. law um, using only four hand selected all natural ingredients yeast, hops, water, and malted barley. We allow yeast to remain in the bottle to enhance the fullness and flavors so it is naturally cloudy. Expect this ale to be fun, fruity, and satisfying. You know you're in Wisconsin when you see the spotted cow. Only in Wisconsin. First off, that is a ass load of words on the side of a, ca- a bottle. It, it really is. But that, in its own right, is a weird statement to say in the industry anymore, is the side of a bottle. <laughs> if it's yeah. not like a bomber or something, it feels funny to have a bottle. I don't know if they even they make don't. it in cans. I didn't think so. I think they only bottle everything. Everything we have out there is bottles. I got a sample pack of 24 or 18 or something like that bottles. They're all glass bottles with this weird textured label on them. Well, let's let's break down this bottle design. So this label design here that we have on it, um, we kind of got, you know, in a way too, because we have the top label. Uh, That goes across the neck of the bottle. Which is crooked and it drives me nuts. Yeah, it's very, very crooked. (laughs) Um, And then we have the main one that goes across the body of the bottle. So, as usual, I will let you begin. Man, I love this beer. I cannot say that I love the label. Um, It is very busy because it's not a full wrap. So, it doesn't wrap the whole bottle, which means that they tried to slam so many words and so many graphics onto like a two inch piece of paper. They've got the government warning. You've got brewed and bottled in New Glarus, Wisconsin. You've got employee owned. You've got New Glarus Brewing Co. Um, dot, dot, dot. I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. Then you've got a cow jumping over the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> it says spotted cow. It's green, has kind of an ombre orange to yellow in the sky. I really like the watercolor effect behind it. That's kind of cool. It it just is not something you see very often in beer labels. I do appreciate that it's a textured label, so it's not just a flat label. It does have a little bit of like a almost almost watercolor paper texture. If you were to yeah. like a watercolor paper. Man, this is like 6 point font on the side of it. That's hard to read. Like you got to really bring it close to your face to see it. I do appreciate that it says only in Wisconsin, and it so that's pretty straight to the point. Hey, we don't distribute anywhere else. And I like the signatures on it. That's not something I see very often, but they have like the owner's signatures printed on it. It's different. 
so it stands out to me. And then jump into the top label here. It says spotted cow again, but that's because it's a bottle and it's sitting in a pack 95% of the time. So you want to see that it's spotted cow on the top. It's green with a little bit of a gold outline on it. it says employee owned. Um, I like that font more than the new Glarus font. Not a big fan of the weird, like, I don't even textured font. <laughs> it is new Glarus. It feels like someone took a crayon and tried to write on a piece of cardboard. Yep. And like, that's the font. It does. It looks like. It's somebody's like scribbling, but it's on really rough texture and or like really bad cardboard, not the good cardboard. Yeah. But I mean, it tells you what it is for the most part, not very boldly. Like you wouldn't know what kind of beer this is because it's not really labeled until you read the really, really micro sized font. Now, is that because people know what it is? I was going to say that that I guess is a. It's kind of a big thing. My first thought is, yes, it's very busy. This is a very small label. Yeah, tiny. Uh, I bet it does save them a ton of money, though. Um, because when you really think about it, does a does a bigger wraparound really make a difference? Because if the beer is this good and and everything, nobody nobody cares. How much has it changed too? Like, was it a full wrap, and then they made it smaller mm-hmm. because people knew what it was? And that that could be that could definitely be true too. It 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 just kind of gets me thinking about in this industry, it's so hard for people to make money, so you start cutting corners. And well, cutting I wouldn't say this is cutting a corner, but cutting you, costs where you yeah can. you try and cut costs and like try and you know make sure that like this is we are going to use every single ounce of this label like we are going to put something everywhere and yes it is a little busy but at the same point like it's not overly busy and i don't feel like anything feels necessarily out of place either um i mean it's laid out well it's just busy yeah i think that's that's what i'm looking for is it's laid out well there's no crazy fonts outside of the what new glarus brewing company is (laughs) But like the rest of them are all, you know, normal fonts. Um, they don't, you know, it, it's not like the, what was the last one? The foreign local where you kind of had fonts all over the yep. place and, and it kind of got a little messy. You just don't have that with this. You got the spotted cow on the neck, which is good because it tells you exactly what it is. And, you know, at a certain point, everyone knows what spotted cow is. So when this is sitting in a six pack, Although the fact that the six pack is going to show you it's spotted cow uh, on the box itself, you can easily see what this is. Okay, should this be this top neck piece? Should it always be a full wrap so that you can get it the right shape? I feel like it's not the right shape to fit the top of the bottle because it is a rectangle instead of like a par- parallelogram that has like the side sticking out. Interesting. Because then it would wrap better because it it's crooked, and it bothers me. Yeah, it's it's pretty damn crooked. But that's because it it's straight for what that's worth. But mm-hmm. it it's crooked because the bottle slopes. Yeah, yeah, you're you're not wrong. Uh this you know you, you got a cow on here and it's spotted, so really easy to right to the point. To see that the one thing I think, which obviously no one's going to change this now, but I think you could have put the uh, state so like you could have made it kind of black like where it has like this white almost like stripe in it on the cow yep i feel like you could have just left that black and then put this white outline of wisconsin on the cow and then put your star there because it, it would kind of go perfect because they have that like little patch at the bottom there of just black yep so it feels like you could have maybe done that and uh, instead of having italy on yeah. the cow because it totally has Italy on yeah, it right that, now. Yeah, that like actually is it's what it looks like. It does look like <laughs> Italy, just upside down. But yeah, I, it's a it's a decent looking bottle. It, it's to the point that it does. Uh, we've had this discussion a few times off air about Sun King and how their mainstays don't really like the the stuff really never changes. Like they've made a few tweaks and updates here, but uh, you know, at a certain point, you don't you don't really want to. Uh, do a rebrand of it because then people don't know what it is. 
and that's probably exactly what's happened here is at a certain point you don't ever want to just touch this because then you're going to confuse people and once you start confusing customers you start losing customers and that just doesn't work especially because i assume this beer has really set with the like older generation because it is a pretty drinkable beer is probably like my dad would drink this and i mean he's he's a craft beer guy now but if i would have given it to him six years ago he would have drank it because it's light it's drinkable it's you know it's what they expect out of beer it tastes like beer but if you change the label then they're going to go into the liquor store and be like where's my beer yeah yeah you're, i mean you're not wrong that that is exactly likely what would happen all right let's jump into the bjcp beer style guidelines so if you are new we just kind of go through each one of the style guidelines there's uh, appearance, aroma, flavor, and mouthfeel, and just kind of discuss whether or not this beer on our palates match what a uh, BJCP beer judge would actually be looking for in a competition setting. So the overall impression, a family of refreshing, highly attenuated, hoppy, and fairly bitter Belgian ales with a very dry finish and high carbonation, characterized by a fruity, spicy, sometimes phenolic fermentation profile, and the use of cereal grains and sometimes spices for complexity. Uh, several variations in strength and color exist. So that is kind of what they are expecting as just an overall style is, is what you can kind of expect out of a beer like this. And again, this is a, a farmhouse ale uh, saison. Appearance, pale gold to deep amber in color, sometimes pale orange. Long-lasting, dense, rocky white to ivory head. Belgian lace, unfiltered, so clarity is variable, poor to good, and maybe hazy. What do you think? It is a little hazy. It's definitely pale gold. It's almost got like a super yellowy tint to it, so it's not like as golden as I would think, but it looks exactly like I would expect the beer to look, and it does hold ahead really nicely. I'm not getting any of the Belgian lace, uh, maybe a little bit, but not like we did with Taxman's Belgian. I mean, it fits. Appearance isn't my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> it It's definitely the, it's pale gold, uh, uh very much, um, cre it's cream ale. It's cream ale gold is yep. what is what this looks like. Like this really will remind you of that. There's not much for an unfiltered beer. There, there's not really any floaties in here. It's like hazy ish, but I mean you can see. You can't mostly through. I mean I can see my finger. Yeah, you can see your fingers through the glass. Like it's not terrible. It's not a. It's not like a haze bomb or anything like that. And there's not a bunch of, um, you know, crap in here that makes it to where you can't see anything i i definitely i mean i still have head on mine and i haven't swirled it or anything like that so it is long lasting it's got a little bit of that belgian lace to it uh, as i kind of like rock mine back and forth you can kind of see it it just it doesn't stick yeah it's not sticking to the glass like a true belgian would yeah which is fine because that's not what this is so no worries there all right down to aroma a pleasantly aromatic mix of fruity spice, yeast, and hops. The fruity esters are moderate to high and often have a citrus fruit, palm fruit, or stone fruit character. Low to moderately high spice notes are often like black pepper, not clove. Hops are low to moderate and have a continental character. A continental character. Spicy, floral, earthy, or fruity. The malt is often overshadowed, but if detected is slightly grainy. Spices and herbs are optional, but not dominant. Sourness, optional. Okay. <laughs> so I get quite a bit of spice coming mm -hmm. out of this. There's a little, little bit of underlying sweetness, almost like a honey. And then there's definitely like a bready finish. Like there's like maybe the cereal grains. Um, are coming out of it, but there is definitely a bready finish that comes off kind of uh, 
kind of sweet as well. So it's a it's like a citrusy sweet aroma, which I'm not mad at. I think it smells good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty similar to what to what I get. You don't really get any hops. Yeah, it definitely smells like you would expect a farmhouse ale. That that kind of musky spiciness um, that comes with this kind of style really makes you feel like it was, you know, uh, stored in a barnyard for a little bit of time. Brewed in an open air brewery. Yeah. <laughs> Just without all the sourness to it. I can tell that it's going to be spicy when you drink it. Not like hot, but the like just flavor of spice. I will say it's 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 pretty clean. Yeah. Nothing nothing super overpowering. Everything kind of feels like it blends well together as well. So nothing nothing weird about it, which is which is nice and obviously something kind of what you're looking for because if it smells good, it's usually going to taste good. From what we have found since aroma and flavor are pretty much the same. So I will say it does smell really good. Like it's one of the beers that I would smell and go okay i want to drink this Mm -hmm. because it's not like matt said it's not too overpowering but it is it is pungent it's not hiding in the glass and sometimes when you get a beer you're going (laughs) like damn does this smell like anything like what the hell yeah we've had a few beers on this show already that have been like that where you smell it and you're like there's just not much smell to this and you drink it and you're like oh there's all the flavor but it is kind of interesting to not really get any sort of flavor profile from the uh from the aroma sometimes. All right, flavor-wise, a balance of fruity and spicy yeast, hoppy bitterness, and grainy malt with moderate to high bitterness and a very dry finish. The fruity and spicy aspects are medium-low to medium-high, and hop flavor is low to medium, both with similar character as in the aroma. Malt is low to medium with the soft grainy palate, very high attenuation, Never with a sweet or heavy finish. Bitter, spicy aftertaste. Spices and herbs optional, but if used, must be in harmony with yeast. I mean, it drinks very, almost Belgian spice forward, and then it has a little residual sweetness with almost like a tart, twangy finish. Like I get a little bit of tartness on the back end. I don't know what that is, but it's got like a natural like almost grassy character to it i enjoy it for me this is just this is what you want a farmhouse ale to taste like like when we had ardent this is what i expected and ardent was so far off it just wasn't even funny but like yes this is a lighter a much lighter like this is like the Bud Light of farmhouse sales. Like, let's be honest. That's that's where we're looking. It's very easy to see why people think this is a cream ale, despite the fact that cream ale doesn't have all of these like spicy notes and stuff like that to it. But I think I think what's happened now that I you know dug a little more into this, you know that that cast conditioning I think is what's giving it some of that that creamy texture that you would normally feel like you're getting out of a cream ale. Cause uh, you know, jumping back here, it's got a gentler level of carbonation, which to me is going to be uh, something smoother than what you may normally get uh, a rounder mouthfeel. Again, it's going to be smoother. Like that's, that's how I read these and maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I read this kind of stuff. And since it is unfiltered, usually shows a slightly more complex, complex flavor and i think it does that i think i think for it being so light it does show a pretty complex flavor profile even though it's not it's it's not like there's it's not that complex it's not an off-putting flavor profile and i mean that in like it's not going to scare some a novice drinker away who's going to read it and go man there's so much going on in here but all right, man, just try it. Like, see what you think, because it's not going to be a punch you in the mouth type of like sour or tart or anything. But it is different than a Bud Light or a you know a a cream ale. But even this has big notes of cream ale in it. Like the, I don't know. It's the sweetness. I think it's the like 
residual breadiness. This may get me some shit, but this isn't that far off from like a Miller Lite. That's very similar. Yeah, like because you get kind of get some of that corn that, and that's maybe that's where the sweetness. I don't think they put corn in it, but that similar kind of sweetness that you get out of Miller Lite from the corn and stuff. It, it's really not that far off from from what that tastes like to me. I want to drink it with a good fish. I don't know why. I think it'd be good with like a oh white food. Fish. I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? To eat it, like to to eat your fish and drink <laughs> your beer. Um, but I think it would like accentuate a fish really nicely because it's not too bold, but it would have like a nice pairing with like a white like trout or something. Man, you just stepped so <laughs> far outside of my realm of everything. <laughs> I can't do any of that. I don't even really like drinking beer and eating food. I don't. I I don't know what it is. Just tangent, gotta, but just gotta pair it. Gotta yeah, pair it well. There's just something about it that uh, I want to be able to taste both, and even in a pairing, like I just don't feel they really mix well. And especially like that's a lot to think about because like I I know they always say like an IPA goes good with spicy food. See, I don't think I hate IPAs and spice, but I just like if I go to B Dubs, don't judge me because <laughs> I don't go to B Dubs very often. But I people are like, "What you drinking?" I'm like, "I don't know, fucking Bud Light." Because yeah. anything else, they have IPAs, and I think the hops like make shit hotter. Yeah, I I I don't know. I, I just I typically steer away from it for the most part. I just I've not found. I will drink whiskey with food but for whatever reason beer just doesn't doesn't go well with me uh last thing here mouthfeel light to medium low body very high carbonation effervescent light warming alcohol optional sourness is rare but optional how the fuck can you get sourness out of mouthfeel oh man (laughs) i just copied what's on the page the fuck bjcp I wonder if sourness is maybe like when you put it in and like you can start feeling like you can kind of feel the sourness. Like if you're eating a warhead, it, you, mm-hmm. your mouth can just feel whatever that is. Mm. This actually so this misses the mark here because it's not very high carbonated. And it could be because it's cast aged, mm-hmm. but it is not super carbonated and it's it's kind of light bodied for sure. Yeah, I can't remember what the hell effervescent means, but I definitely feel like it's it's light bodied. It's not heavy at all. It doesn't sit on your stomach. You could drink quite a few of these and not and not feel it on your stomach. You're obviously not really gonna feel it in general because it was only what like four point eight percent. Pretty low. So you know, a session beer at that point, you're good to go. Great for camping. Great for. I always go to do tailgating before like concerts and stuff, things like that where you can have a good time, but uh, your good time doesn't end in the parking lot. So great time tailgating as long as you're in Wisconsin. <laughs> That's true. Or if <laughs> or come you back, bring it back with yeah. you. Yeah. Or someone brought it back for you. Yeah. The, one be- of the, the beer fairy brought it to my house. Exactly. So. Exactly. Just showed up in my wife's car. It was great. So I, I think, you know, for the, Ninety percent, ninety five percent, it matches what it's looking for. I do think the cast conditioning obviously changes some of that. Yeah, it definitely levels it out a little bit compared to like a traditional farmhouse. But I also think that's what makes it unique too. Oh, it, that's what makes it sessionable for sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and the ABV, but that's what makes it more palatable, makes it more widely accepted and sought after, because it is like taking Sun King's Cream Ale, for example. And running it through a farmhouse process, yeah, basically, yeah, and then cask conditioning it after that, which now makes me interested to trying this and kind of knowing what to look for. I, I'd be interested to go try some more cask conditioned beers. I know that used to be a popular thing. You don't really see it a ton. We saw it at Winterfest. They had a few there. Um, it's always a long line. Yeah, but it would be interesting to just kind of go out and see see what other people are doing around here with those and 
Firkin Friday. It used to be a thing yeah. at a few breweries. I don't know if it still is. Um, can't imagine. But I know for a while it was a thing. Um, yeah, I think it was books and brews, so I'm guessing it's not a thing anymore. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Uh, all right, so now it's on to tier list. So this counts as a house beer. And just kind of, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, we go through this list each time, and it's like, man, we're going to get to a point where we're just like, nope, we're just not going to go through it. It'll maybe be like, here are the last five or something. Got to start keeping track of that nonsense. But right now, we have four on here. We have uh, three Floyd Zombie Dust at number three, uh, S tier. And Cosmetic Beer Company's Italian Pilsner is number eight on the S tier. Moontown Cecil New England IPA is also S tier at spot nine. And then we have Taxman Gold Standard A tier at number 15. And if you are new to the show, this beer tier list is simply our top 50 house beers. S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier. It's like a Japanese uh, scale that is huge in the video game world. And so I just kind of repurposed it for this uh each of these tiers has 10 beers which is how we get to 50 so right now we haven't really had a bad house beer to be honest i think we've kind of picked it to to know to take the ones that we at least like in general i think we're gonna have a hard time when we get further down because most of the time not all the time but most of the time if somebody's labeling something their house beer it's gonna be decent yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna get hard to really think of something as D tier. So it does it does make you wonder, like, oh, do we have to maybe change it at a certain point? Because it's hard to be like, okay, if if we kept doing this and Taxman Gold Standard got to let's say D tier, it's not a D tier beer. So we might just end up turning us into a top fifty or something stupid. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how we do it. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. When like, I want to see where you're gonna put this one because I don't really know yet. I have an idea, but um, who, buddy? <laughs> this one's tough. Like it feels. I I think I think it's S tier. I think it's. I think it is incredibly good there's a reason it's as beloved in this country as it is there's a reason it's won a bunch of awards there's a reason it still sells as well as it does you know after all these years like because i think this beer is like 20 years old or something close to it like i because i think they started around like 2002 so this is an old this got to be a pretty old beer it's still flavorful Whatever they're doing is unique. Nobody else is really doing anything like this. As you said, I it definitely reaches like an entire populace. Like yep. it's not a beer that is only going to reach a certain amount of people. And I think those do stand out way more than a, an IPA or or a house beer like that. You know, like you put this up against Moontown Cecil New England IPA. Which one are people going to choose more often? And it's going to be Spotted Cow. And even even I might choose more of the Spotted Cow than a New England IPA, to be honest. This is tough. I feel like if we would have put Zombie Dust at one, this would have been maybe my number two. But I don't, I don't know if I like it more than Zombie Dust. Especially, I tried Zombie Iced over the weekend. Holy fuck. Strangely malty, but I like it. <clears throat> I absolutely love that. And then I went home and had just the regular one. And it's just, I don't know what it is, man. Zombie dust to me is, is a little just, there's some crack in it because I just, I love it. Like I may not drink a ton of it, but there's something about it that I just absolutely love. And that's how I feel about this. There's something about it that is just different, unique. You're not getting it down here. You really only get it out of Spotted Cow. It's re like my wife loves this, and that is hard to find in a beer. Yeah, I would say four. 
That's where I was going to go. Nice. Nailed it. Because, one, I actually think if we could put it at three with Zombie Dust, I would, because it's just as influential in the beer industry, if not even maybe a little bit more, as Zombie Dust. It's just as sought out. So, so here's, I guess, here's the first question. Is this one where we move up Zombie Dust? We've now had this. So we put it at two and then put this at three. Because we think we think it's it's better than four, but we can't we are not justifying it over zombie dust. Because that was something we had talked about originally, is that you can maybe move these things around. It could get spongy, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's I can do that. That's kind of valid. And then that that leaves one open and that it's gonna be interesting to see what we eventually find out as one. But I have a feeling we end up moving zombie dust up again at some point. I have a few ideas of house beers that I think would be above zombie dust. I just want to get them on. We'll see. Yeah. I've got some good ideas. I'm okay with doing that. We move zombie dust up to two and spotted cow goes in at three. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's fair to spotted cow. And I also think it's fair to zombie dust. There's um, just, there are two beers that there's nothing wrong with them. The hype alone is worth it. I have people that are like, oh, man, somebody's going to Wisconsin. Give me some spotted. Oh, man, somebody's going to Wisconsin. Get me some spotted. So I think it's I think it's right, which I don't know if we'll drink it today or not. But Matt and I also have the like imperial version of spotted cow that we can drink. I didn't even know that existed. <clears throat> yeah, it was one of the red bottles that you thought was a repeat that I sent you. Oh, OK. All right, well, that's it. So as a recap, we we ended up moving Three Floyd's Zombie Dust, which is like episode nine. Uh, ended up moving that up to to number two in the S tier, and now Spotted Cow is going to take over spot number three. Interesting. So we will see where this goes. But that's going to do it for today's show. We will be back next week with another beer. So until then, cheers. Cheers, y'all.